Welcome back to Open Line, everybody. We are talking term limits tonight. A chance to call in, give your comment, uh, question, whatever, about term limits. We have with us the Knox County Mayor, Glenn Jacobs. He's chair of Tennessee for Congressional Term Limits, joining us via Zoom. Um, and we've been talking about term limits for the first half of the show, but it's unusual we have the Knox County Mayor on. And so it's also maybe a good idea for me to just ask a question or two about some of the big issues facing Knox County. So our signal goes all over Middle Tennessee, um, but Knox County, Nashville, two big cities, um, you know, Knoxville, Nashville. What are, what are some of the big issues there that you're dealing with in, in Knox County? I think they're going to be some of the same things that everyone deals with around the state of Tennessee. Um, the uh, the opioid and substance misuse epidemic is a big problem. Um, mental health issues have uh, become more and more of a problem. Um, our workforce and aligning um, our educational system with what the workplace needs, um, you know, that's something that, that we are... Uh, invested in and are working on as well um you know and then we have just the issues that everybody faces in a particular way as far as infrastructure um things like stormwater and um you know uh planning for additional growth which i know is uh, you know something that's really big in nashville and uh, we see the same thing um we have a lot of people moving here we're an attractive area um how do we deal with that how do we ensure that uh, you know we, we don't end up uh with massive congestion um our housing prices are, are going through the roof um, you know, how how can we try to alleviate that to some extent? Uh, you know, we're talking about affordable housing. Um, it's really workforce housing. You know, the, the, the uh, people that are coming here to work or people that are already here uh, looking to buy a home, um, it's becoming more and more difficult. Uh, so those are problems I think that everyone across the state is facing. What about taxes? Have you had to, taxes in the pandemic, have you had to raise taxes? Have you been able to keep it the same? Where, where are you on taxes? When we were going into uh, the height of the pandemic last year, it was actually around our um, budget season. And of course, we were preparing for uh, an apocalypse when it came to tax revenues. We we're extremely concerned uh, with what our sales tax would look like. Um, but we have weathered the storm very well. Uh, it's uh, interesting across the state, we've actually um, seen uh, higher than baseline uh, sales tax revenue a collection. Um, so we've been extremely fortunate um, with all the federal money that's coming down. Uh, you know, there's a lot of projects that actually before would have been uh, would have been very difficult for us to do monetarily, uh, but we are looking at those now. Uh, so we're in a very good uh, fiscal situation, uh, actually stronger than uh, I, I, stronger than a year ago. Uh, as ironic as that may sound, fascinating. All right, that's interesting. Um, always good to go to Reverend Fuzz. Reverend Fuzz is on the line. Hello, Reverend Fuzz. And, hey, Dan. I got a question. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, um, you know, I guess Nashville, they had term limits on the city council. I don't know how many years ago, it seemed like forever, just 20 years ago. And some people would say that that actually kind of hurt the city in terms of having that knowledge on the council. So for the guests tonight, how really important is this term limit thing I mean, why don't we think of these men and women who are elected and who want to stay there forever as being good people who are going to do, do the best thing for the nation? And as long, the longer they stay, you know, after you've been there 12 years, it looks like you set up some contacts and connections and knowledge and information that's good for the nation, that we've grown some good leaders now. So why aren't these good people, why shouldn't we be happy to have wise old men and women who've been doing the job for 15 years to learn where all the bones are hidden? That's kind of my question. Why we want to get rid of them? I'm not saying whether I'm for or against. I'm just asking that question. 
Reverend Fuzz, thank you. Always great to hear from Reverend Fuzz, and I hope you're thank doing you. okay. So I, I asked that a little bit at the top about our experience here, but Reverend Fuzz takes it even a step further. Uh, these are servants. They've been there a long time. They have great knowledge. Why should why should we kick them out? Um, and you heard his question there. What 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 do you say? Sure, sure. Um, well, I, I think a lot of people out there would actually. Um, uh, not agree that they're really wise people. Um, they've been there a long time, but in some cases, um, you know, uh, I, I think that everyone would really like to, to see a change. Um, and I think too, it's important when we talk about you know, folks like their congressperson that they don't like Congress. Um, you know, part of the reason for that too is uh, because the that person, your congressperson, has a lot of power within the district uh, that they live in to bring things to the district, um, which is endearing, uh, you know, as far as uh, getting things done, getting stuff done within the district. Um, but it's probably not great for the country. You know, when we look at our fiscal situation here, we have $30 trillion in debt are more. Um, I just mentioned that the federal government is spending a lot of money, which is, uh, as a local official, that's wonderful, but there's massive price to pay, and that's a huge amount of debt. Um, so basically, in, in many cases, um, you know, your local congressperson um, is, is able to uh, appeal to the voters by the money that they bring in. Um, and that's also a cycle, I think, that, you know, needs, needs to be broken. Um, you know, certainly as an elected official, uh, all of us try to do the best that we can for our district. Um, but we also need to look at a bigger picture. Are we doing the best that we can uh, for the country? Um, and I, when we see people that have been there for um, many years, in fact, decades, um, I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, and the wisdom is not, it's not always are the, uh, the institutional knowledge is not always, we talked about before, it's not always reside within the elected official. Uh, it's within the folks that stay there through, throughout um, different administrations uh, and uh, changes within the government. So I, I think that really there is a balance that can be reached. And again, um, you know, I don't think when we talk about term limits, anyone's saying that someone's going to go to Congress, stay there for two years, and that's it. Um, I think that we're more talking about, you know, a, a number of terms, um, whatever that may be. But uh, we're looking at the career politicians, not someone that might want to go up there for a couple terms and come home, uh, frankly, which is what uh, the founders envisioned as opposed to what we have now. That's an interesting point that because they're the ones that are I guess getting the federal funding that does tend to ingratiate them, no matter who they are, to their constituents back home. Sure. I mean, that makes a good point. Sure. It's interesting what Reverend Fuzz said, um, and I think kind of what he may be getting at is if, okay, you're term limited for 12 years, uh, in that 11th year, you're going to be thinking about what's my next job? And you're going to be maybe not focused on the work of the people. Not fo you're not focused on getting reelected. You're focused on what you're going to do. And, and I think he was expressing there might be some concern with that. Sure, and and, and that's the case too. Um, but right now, you're not going to be focused on the job either because you're out campaigning. Frankly, you know, in many cases. Uh, so uh, again, there's you know there's there's another point to that. Um, and, and you know, especially uh, when we see that with. Uh, with representatives, uh, you know, they're they're at a two-year term, so they're pretty much constantly campaigning. So the argument could be, when they get to the later stages of a term-limited career, since they're done and they're not going to be uh, campaigning anymore, they can actually they can actually concentrate on getting some things done, and they might be able to concentrate on getting some things done that are important but not necessarily super popular. Uh, you know. Because as officials, sometimes we do have to make those those decisions. Um, so in that respect, it might insulate them, um, you know, from thinking if I do this, it's the right thing to do. But it might cost me some percentage points in the election because I don't have an election to worry about it. Interesting, Reverend Fuzz. Thank you for that question. Um,
back to our conversation about Knox County. You said people are moving there like crazy. We're certainly seeing that here in, in Davidson County. We're worried about gentrification. We're certainly worried about housing prices and affordable housing. So it sounds like you, are you worried about some of those very same things? I mean, what, oh, what yes. are you seeing yeah. as far as people moving in and housing prices? Uh, our housing prices are going up. Um, our housing mar market is extremely hot. Um, our uh, housing inventory has depleted. Uh, and literally the houses can't be built fast enough at this point. Uh, so we are um, we are confronting some of the same challenges that Davidson County has for sure. Where are they coming from? Are they coming from other parts of the state? Are they coming from, I don't know, the north, the south? Where, where, why are all these people coming to Knox County? Why are they coming to Nashville? I'll, I'll ask you about <laughs> Knox County. Why are they coming to Knox County? Sure, um, because we're a great place to live. <laughs> uh, you know, we just are. I mean, well, that's the case. Um, and you know, people have discovered it and uh, they want to move here. Um, I moved here 26 years ago um, and had lots of opportunities to live other places. And it's just such a wonderful place to live that I don't ever want to go anywhere else. Um, so we are seeing people come here, especially from the high tax, high regulation jurisdictions. Um, and we're seeing more businesses come here as well to, to escape the tax burdens of um, especially some of the states in the Northeast and uh, places like California. What about gentrification, which is a big issue here? Is that an issue there? To some extent, um, but you know, probably not as much as uh, what you all are facing. Um, I, th I think one of the most important things to keep in mind when it comes to gentrification uh, is really um, economic opportunity for everybody. You know, and home ownership is something that's you know that's very important. Um, so you know, we don't we want to ensure that um, you know people have the ability to buy a home people have the ability to pay their rent. Um, but if you're a homeowner, you know, as your, uh, as your home appreciates in value, that makes you very happy because you can sell it for more. If you are a renter, uh, when the place that you rent appreciates in value, that becomes problematic because the rent's gonna go up. Um, you know, but it's many cases difficult for people to make that transition from renting to home ownership. Um, so for me, it's all about economic, economic opportunity um, and ensuring that we have good jobs so that people, you know, people can pay the rent to stay in a nicer place, um, but eventually you know, they get into home ownership, which I, you know, it's the basis of the American dream. I think it's very important. Um, so. You know, that's something that we're really invested here. In fact, I think my job as mayor is to do what I can to ensure the most economic opportunity for the most people. Interesting. All right, we will take a break. Come back, continue our discussion. Question about Knox County, go right ahead. Or term limits, our original topic. Should there be term limits? What do you think? There's the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.